You know, it's real easy when you're in a place like this to feel at peace. But what do you do when life's not on the beach? When life's not so easy, when circumstances come at you, when you're in the hospital, when things don't go as you planned? What happens when life has those surprises? Here it's beautiful. It's easy to have peace. Nobody around, just taking it easy. But when life has circumstances, that's what we're going to talk about. Those things that happen that cause us to worry. Can we trust God in the middle of that? Are we going to turn it over to Him? And are we going to control our thoughts? Are we going to say, God, I trust you and I'm thankful for what you've done. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. This is awesome, huh? Well, as I got ready to do this video on He Gives Us Peace, I don't know if you can hear that, but the ice cream man is now swinging through the neighborhood. <laughs> You know, that's just like life, you know, uh, when you're looking for peace and you're trying to get calm and you're looking for quiet situations, it's when sometimes peace doesn't seem to come, at least as far as outside. The truth is that peace really has to be an attitude of the heart. It has to be a heart thing. So even when the ice cream man comes or the neighbor starts mowing or birds start chirping or my little dog starts barking here, um, peace is about really knowing three things and I'm gonna give you three keys tonight to living or today whenever you watch this uh, to living in peace and by the way if you're at Saturday night thank you so much I really thought I was gonna be able to make it back for today's service I hope to not miss very many more services uh, for weddings but this wedding I've known this uh, young man since he was about 12 years old and known his family for a long time now and uh, he's one of our military guys and I just felt like I really needed to be there and really wanted to be a part of this service, but I'm sorry I'm missing you guys tonight if you're watching this tonight. If you're watching this online, then never mind, you didn't hear any of that. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of weddings over the years, and I'll never forget one wedding uh, I was at, and I don't think I was officiating this one, but one wedding that I was at, um, I actually remember, oh, it was a friend of mine. Their, uh, one of their relatives came into the wedding after the wedding had started. It was in a big church. And they had that little foyer, but the t foyer was a little bit open to the church. I think the ice cream man's getting closer. Uh, the foyer was open to the church, and uh, this relative came into the wedding drunk and really impacted the whole wedding so that right now, almost 30 years later, I still remember that that person coming in and talking really loud, and they had to carry, you know, basically escort them out. You know, life, when it comes to having peace, my sprinklers just came on. <laughs> when it comes to having peace, you can't stop things from happening. You can't stop the sprinklers from coming on, the air conditioning, the, the uh, uh, things from coming into your life. But in Romans 5.1, it talks about the whole idea of the peace of God and the presence of God. And it says that the peace of God, I love this, Warren Wearsby, when he talked about peace, talked about Romans 5.1, and he said, the peace of God and the presence of God, he is the God of peace, and he will come, listen to what Warren Wearsby says, he will come when we practice right thinking, right praying, and right living. Right thinking, right praying, and right living. So worry is the tension between the mind and the heart. And the peace of God will guard, in Romans 5.1, the peace of God will guard, that means garrison, it means put a wall around our hearts and mind. But uh, we must meet the conditions that he gives. That's what Warren Wearsby says. But tonight we're going to look at three things, three keys to living in peace, and we're going to talk about trusting God. So that's the idea of, and if you want to do hand motions, trusting God. It's the idea of trusting God. God, hands up. You know, I trust you. I give everything to you. So trusting God is the first part. The second part is receiving peace in all circumstances. And then the third one has to do with this whole idea of taking control of our thinking. And we have a responsibility to take control of our thinking. Too many of us are lazy in the way that we think, and we just allow thoughts to come through. But I'm going to get there in a minute, and that's a big part of the message. So number one, trust God. In Philippians 4, 6, it says this, do not be anxious. Forgive me for just a second because I'm, uh, you know, I used to see really well, but it's gotten to where I have to blow this thing up to 200. All right. So it says in, in Philippians 4, 6, and that's in your notes. If you have your notes, you can pull them out. If you're watching online, it's Philippians 4, 6, and it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer, and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
And we're going to be looking at Philippians 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9 tonight. And I've broke them into three sections. The first one is do not be anxious. The word anxious literally means continuing in distraction. It means to be divided, to have a divided mind. The idea of peace in Scripture, uh, when they use the word peace, it's the idea of being one. It's the idea of oneness or putting something together or even piecing something together. When we're at peace, we are whole. When we're at peace, everything in our lives comes together and we don't have that distraction. We don't have that multi-thinking, that divided thinking. Now, here's one thing I've heard. Prayer does not always change things. It doesn't always change things, but it changes us. Prayer does not always change your circumstances. Listen, there were times in the Bible when people prayed and they were in jail and they were killed for their faith. There were other times they prayed and they were thrown in a fiery furnace and God saved them. Other times they prayed and in jail and they were let out of jail. Other times they were martyred for their faith. Prayer does not always change things, but it changes us. That's why Paul and Silas, even in prison, could pray and sing. This idea here is do not be anxious, but in every situation by prayer. The word prayer here is the idea of worship. It's the idea of giving everything up to God, the idea of worship. Worship, there's several words for it, but one of the words is bowing down. It's going prostrate before God, but it also, prostrate, it also is another, the symbolism in it, in the Greek often, is the idea of a dog licking the hand. It's how much a dog cares about you. See, my little dog is right here. He doesn't want to be too far. Why? Because he thinks I'm awesome. This dog thinks that I'm great. Now, he's not a perfect dog, but he loves me and he cares about me, right? Don't you love me? That's what I thought. The idea of worship is that idea that you look towards your master and you say, God, I am yours. I worship you. Now, the idea of giving everything up to God is understanding that we are also not in control. We're not in control of everything. We're not in control of how um, we run life and being in control of every single thing. And what's interesting is I've seen a couple of movies lately where the heroine or the hero had to come to a point that they realized they weren't in control. It's amazing to me that in our society, even the world is realizing we can't control everything. And a lot of times when we try to control things, when we try to control everything, we actually make it worse. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke 12, 25 and 26. This is from the New Century Version. You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. If you can't even do the little thing, then why worry about the big thing? Basically, worrying is not going to help you. All it's going to do is add gray hair to your life. It may add uh, hypertension to your heart, but it's not going to help you. Listen, your position, the other thing that we need to understand when we surrender to God is not only can we not control anything, and we have to lift it up by prayer and say, God, I'm not in control, you are. But then the third thing we have to realize underneath this point is the idea that, listen, you do not have to fight for your righteousness. You have a position with God, not because of your power, but because of his power. Not because of your righteousness, but because of his righteousness is the reason that we have righteousness with God. Listen, the enemy will come to you and tell you, you are not good enough. He will distract you. He will send the ice cream truck <laughs> into your life and, and will nip at your heels and will constantly do those fiery arrows that say you're not good enough or... Listen, the difference between Christianity and every other religion is we are not workspace. You do not earn your way to God. If you don't get anything else today, get this. Listen, the reason that you can rest, the reason that you don't have to worry, the reason that you can lay everything before God and you can have peace is because you have peace with God, not because of anything you did, but because of what Jesus did. Listen to this verse in Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. It says this. Since we've been made right with God by our faith, we have peace with God. This happened through our Lord Jesus Christ, who through our faith has brought us into that blessing of God's grace that we now enjoy. And then it says this, I love this. And we are happy because of the hope we have in sharing God's glory. Listen, we don't have to fight for our 
salvation. We don't have to do a bunch of works. Every religion is trying to do works. Those people are coming to your door and knocking on your door because they think, if I don't do that, I'm not going to make it into heaven. Listen, as a Christian, the work is already done. He has forgiven your sins, past, present, and future. Jesus died for your sins and my sins. We don't earn it. The whole idea of salvation is you and I don't earn it. Years ago, I thought of this illustration, and I think it really works. Listen, if you were in a pool or you were on the beach and you were swimming and all of a sudden you started drowning and the lifeguard came out and pulled you to shore, you would be safe. Now, if you still thought you were drowning, you might try paddling in the air or paddling on the side of the pool or doing the doggy paddle or looking around for a raft. But the truth is you don't have to do that anymore. And if you're, if you're not careful as a Christian, you will still try to earn your way to God. Listen, God absolutely and completely loves you. The Bible says that once you and I become Christian, the reason that we do good works is because of his love in us, not because we're trying to earn our way to God. So rest in that. Have peace. Surrender. Maybe tonight or today, right now, you just need to say, God, I surrender to you. I have given my life to you. Please help me to receive the grace every day. Receive the grace that you've given me. And quit thinking that I'm not good enough for you. Because the truth is, listen, when the enemy comes to you and says you're not good enough, you agree. I'm not good enough, but I'm good enough because Jesus died for me. He paid the ultimate price. And listen, you know why you have value? You have value because of what someone would pay for you. And Jesus gave his life for you. Listen to what C.S. Lewis said. God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from himself because it's not there. There is no such thing. So not only do we have to trust God, number two, we have to receive peace in all circumstances. Listen, when circumstances happen, when life is rough, a lot of times we think, well, I can't have peace because life isn't going the way we want it to. Peace is not about your circumstance. It's not about whether you're in the hospital, whether you're going through a divorce, whether you're struggling at work, whether you're struggling financially, whether you're living. Peace is not about your circumstances. If you blame everything else for your lack of peace, you've missed the whole point. Peace has nothing to do with your circumstance, with where you are, with who is bothering you, who you're unhappy with. Listen, your lack of forgiveness, your bitterness, even your other, the other things where you're holding something against somebody or you're worrying because you think you can control something is not God's fault. He's not bringing these challenges in. He's trying to help you to find peace even in the middle of the storm. But we're like Peter. We're walking on water. Everything's going great. We're looking at Jesus and then we realize life isn't well and we look away from Jesus. If you want to receive peace, Look towards Jesus. In Philippians 4, 7, we did verse 6. Now here's verse 7. So when you surrender to God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word peace here is that word, that, that Greek word, to join, to be one. It's to not be distracted, to not be divided. So here's my question to you right now. Are you at peace right now or are you divided? We live in a culture where we purposefully are dividing people all the time. They're looking down all the time. I, I, I thought of it as, you know, years ago you'd see everybody standing upright. I think we're all going to be old and hunched over because we're always looking at our phones. We're going to have problems with our thumbs because of the way we use things. We are distracted people. But it doesn't take a cell phone. It doesn't take a, 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 a one of those iPhones to mess you up. All it takes is for your mind to begin thinking and worrying and think that you can do it instead of saying, God, not only do I give you up, I receive your peace. God, help me to receive your peace. And then it says this, it'll guard your hearts and minds. The idea of heart and mind is the idea, it'll guard your feelings. How are you feeling right now? Do you feel at peace? It says the peace of God that, that goes beyond understanding, it goes beyond circumstance, will guard your feelings and even your perceptions. Sometimes when we see people, we judge them wrong. Sometimes we judge the world wrong. Sometimes we see things wrong. And the truth is, you and I, our perceptions are wrong all the time because we think temporary instead of eternal. Are we really thinking about the eternal thing that says, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus? And then in John chapter 16, verse 32, it says this in 33. The time is now here, Jesus said, and he's talking about going to the cross. You will leave me alone, but I'm never really alone because the Father's with me. I told you these things so that you can have peace in me. In this world, you will have trouble, but be brave. 
I've defeated the world. Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross, and he says to them, you can have peace in me. In the middle of what they're about to experience, Jesus said, you guys are all going to leave me. I'm going to be alone. But then he says to them, but I'm never really alone. And you can have peace even in the middle of that. Why? Because he has overcome the world. Are you receiving his peace? Have you given up to God and are you receiving his peace? In 1 Peter it says how to do that. 1 Peter 5, 7. Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand so he may lift you up. Listen to this. In due time, cast your anxiety on him for he cares for you. It says, it says that he may lift you up in due time. It means your circumstance may not be what you want right now. But he will lift you up when the time is right. He's going to lift you up. So we humble ourselves and we say, God, I don't know why I'm in this circumstance. I don't know why I'm dealing with this. But I receive your peace even here in the hospital. I receive your peace even as I go through this divorce. I receive your peace even as I deal with this legal issue. I receive your peace even when I deal with this neighbor, my children, these other circumstances and situations, the financial things in my life. I receive your peace. Why? Because I know what this verse says is true. You care for me. God absolutely loves you. Now I want to do a little side note real quick. Anxiety can also be a physical or even a, a psychological condition caused by chemical imbalances and all kinds of stuff. It does not hurt to have a good counselor. If you really struggle with real anxiety, anxiety that won't seem to let go, please get a good counselor. There's nothing wrong with a good counselor and sometimes, truthfully, I had a vitamin B deficiency a few years ago that really messed with me emotionally. And I found out it was just, it just had a, it was a vitamin, a, I think it was B and D. A, a vitamin I was low on just made me feel really down and really discouraged. And then once I got my vitamin B levels up and I got my vitamin D level, all of a sudden I felt good. So anxiety is not always just about trusting God. Sometimes it can also be a chemical thing. So make sure you take care of yourself. That's just a little side note. Nothing from scripture there. But here it is. Three keys. So we trust God, right? We trust God. We give it up. And then we receive peace. And then finally, what do we do? We have to take control of our thinking. Listen, there is nothing you can control in life. You can't control the little arrows that come by. You can't control what happens sometimes with your family. You can't control what somebody says to you. But Corey Ten Boom talked about years ago, the only thing they could tr control was their attitude. And so they learned to be thankful. When Corey Ten Boom was in the concentration camp with her sister, her sister was more positive than she was. And Corey Ten Boom, a phenomenal woman, was there. And she said to her sister one time, she, her sister said, we're supposed to give thanks. And so they gave thanks for all kinds of things. And Corey Ten Boom said to her sister one day, she said, I will not give thanks for these lice because the lice were chewing them up every night when they went into the barracks the lice were everywhere and they were just chewing them alive and it was a horrible thing and itching all the time and the sores and everything and Corey said I will not give thanks for the lice and one day her sister and she were somewhere and they overheard one of the guards saying the reason that the guards did not mess with the women in the barracks is because of the lice and so Corey looked at her sister and said even for the lice, I will give thanks. Listen, sometimes in life it's hard to give thanks. It's hard to be thankful. But we have to control our thinking. You're planting seeds every day. Wrong thinking leads to wrong feeling. And before long, your heart and your mind are pulled apart and you begin to struggle with worry. In Philippians 4, 8 and 9, this is where that verse continues. In Philippians 4, that's what we're studying tonight. Brothers and sisters, think... That's the word, and I put it in the notes, logizomai. I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's pretty close. Logizomai is the idea of a logbook. That's where they get this word, uh, uh, logizomai. The idea of a logbook is the idea of writing something down. It's the idea of keeping an account. So it says, brothers and sisters, keep an account. Make a logbook. Keep records about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Listen, you might want to, right now in your mind, think of what's worthy of of praise. You may need to, when you get home, make a list what's worthy of praise. And then it says, think about things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. Do what you learned and received from me, what I told you and what you saw me do, and the God of peace will be with you. So the idea is you, you have the God of peace with you. The idea is sometimes we plant the wrong seeds. 
Now, you've heard me talk about this plant. This plant is called Brazilian pepper. Now, I could not find a female. This is the male. The female has little red berries, and they pollinate each other, but I didn't. I had two of these in my yard, and I didn't plant them. They, they're weeds. They planted them. Well, actually, a bird probably planted them, but there's little red berries, and that's how they spread. Somebody brought this plant. Skynus terebinthifolius is its Latin name. Somebody brought this plant to Punta Gorda, Florida. And they planted it as a beautiful shrub. And even early, I believe it was in the 50s, they had these in magazines and were telling people these are great plants. But then they realized they were out of control because these are weeds. When these come into a community or a neighborhood or into a bunch of trees, they will actually kill the trees that are there. They kill mangrove swamps. They'll kill natural trees. They grow in pine forests. So uh, they, will, they will just take over whole fields. And if you see an empty field, eventually these are all by the river. Even now, if you drive down the river in Titusville, you will see tons of these plants. Anywhere nothing's planted, these get planted. Why? Because they're weeds. Weeds grow everywhere. Listen. If you don't take care of the garden of your mind, if you allow the enemy to constantly make you negative and throwing negative seeds and saying things like that'll never be right, and instead of thinking about what's honorable and praiseworthy and giving thanks, you think about what you don't have, what you could have. Listen, the reason Adam and Eve sinned, the reason they did is because they were doubting if what God was giving them was good enough. So are you beginning to question God? I don't think it's good enough. That's not fair. They have more than me. God, you're not being fair to me. I want more. That's not enough. Or are we being thankful and keeping these weeds out of our life? Because here's the deal. Whatever you plant now will grow. So if you're planting bad thoughts and negative thinking and you're constantly judging people and you're critical all the time and you listen and even when you sit in church, you kind of judge everything. Instead of having a logbook about what's good and worthy and right, you have a logbook out of what you don't like and how things could be better and how you would fix it if you were in charge and all those kind of things. Maybe you're at work and you do that all the time. Maybe with your children, you're always on them. Listen, even with your kids, even with your family, even with your spouse, even with your boss, look for what's good. Begin to say, God, show me what's good. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have an opinion. It doesn't mean you can't try to help in this area or a situation, but it means that you think of the good and you say, God, thank you for what you've given me. Did you know scientists have done studies about the human brain? And listen to what they've learned. They've learned that our brains are wired to be negative. Now, I believe that has to do with sin. I think that's one of the things that sin did to us was make us negative. And here's the deal. If something negative happens to you, you will remember that. Think about it. If you had an evaluation at work and the boss said 99 positive things and one negative thing, you're going to remember the one negative thing. If I come to church and 20 people tell me what a great message this was and somebody comes up to me and goes, you know, I didn't like that sermon. I'm going to remember that person who didn't like the message better than the other. And I have to get the weed eater out <laughs> and pull the weeds and say, God, would you help me to plant whatever is good, whatever is worthy of praise, the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. God, help me to think of those things and plant those seeds so these junky weeds can't grow in my life. By the way, one of the things about these weeds, these are called Brazilian pepper because they stink. They smell like pepper. Listen, the weeds that grow in your life, they stink too. And your friends know when you become negative and self-centered and people don't want to spread that stuff. Listen, that stuff spreads like wildfire. It's amazing how we are. That's why we have to plant good seeds. And not only will the good seeds grow in your life, but they'll grow in your children and your grandchildren and your nephews and your nieces as you look for opportunities to encourage and inspire and to show them the things that are honorable and the things that are good. Then finally, 2 Peter 3 says this. Listen, because here's the deal. Our focus shouldn't be just on this world. We shouldn't just want positive thinking because we're trying to have a good life now and having the best life now. I think there was a book about uh, not too long ago. The idea of the best life now, listen, I believe I have the best life because I know what the next life is all about. This life, there's a lot of unfairness. There are things that happen. We live in a sinful world. We live in a world where somebody can die or be hurt because of someone else's sin. And yet there's a time coming where because of God's grace, I will stand before the throne and I'll say, I know Jesus. And God will say, come on in. Well done, good and faithful servant. So he's asked me to be faithful. And so what does this verse say? It says in 2 Peter 3, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven 
and a new earth. Are you looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth? Are you trying to build a life now? Are you trying to make every are you looking forward to retirement? We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless, and listen to these last words, and at peace with Him. Do you have peace with God? Have you ever surrendered your life to Him? If you never have, if you're watching online or if you're watching tonight, if you're watching on Saturday night service, Neil would be glad to talk to you after the service. We don't have a formal invitation, but he'd be glad to talk to you after the service. Also, if you're watching online and you want to know what it means to be a Christian, I want to encourage you, send me a note, send me an email. I'd love to talk to you about what it means to surrender your life to Christ. Remember, if you want to have peace in your life, surrender to Him. Allow Him to give you His peace. Say, God, thank you for peace. And begin to control your thoughts. Getting peace begins with worship. It begins with the idea of worship. And so we're going to worship now with a song if you're in the service. And I want to encourage you, worship with your heart. Not just the words you sing, not just watching the praise team sing, but worship with your heart tonight. Thanks for watching. Sorry I couldn't be there, and I hope you have a great night. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch. Bye.